my dad's always said when you heat with wood it it heats you three times when you chop it when you cut it and when you burn it and i just love cutting wood So I did quite a bit of research before we landed on the heating solution for our house. The outdoor boiler is our main source of heat when it gets really cold. And then as a backup to that, and, and more or less for the shoulder seasons, which would be like fall and spring when it's you have cold days, but then you have warm days right immediately following, uh, our indoor wood stove is to heat during those times. Then as a backup to that, when none of those are going or say we're out of town, we have a propane tank that that fires off the furnace and and heats that way. So three sources of heat, we feel good with the solution that we've landed. When we finished our house in July, we had prepped the boiler lines by burying them into the house. This is the insulated PEX line that's coming from the that's coming from the boiler and feeding hot water to the house. I already pre-installed two a uh, supply line and a return that'll match up with this. The colors don't matter as long as I align it in the house, which I already have. A hundred foot of this insulated PEX for the boiler. So we just I had my excavation guy just just dig out until we ended, and that's this is this is where we're ending up. If, if you're interested in installing a boiler, they tell you to put it at least 25 to 50 feet from the house. We ran into an issue though, when nobody local, like no HVAC service, no plumbing, and uh, nobody knew how to put those in, because they're, they're a lot less common down here. If we lived up north in Minnesota or Canada, then there'd be guys all over that could help with this. But I was kind of left on my own to do that with the help of the company, Portage and Maine, they were amazing, uh, answering my questions. And then the other YouTube videos of guys that have uh, done similar installs. I just kind of learned myself what they had done and, and, uh, and configured that for our own system. So that process took a lot longer than initially anticipated. I had hoped to get the boiler up and running by Thanksgiving, but that uh, did not happen. We ran into a number of hangups. It seemed like every time I went to kind of install the next section, I'd have a part that I needed. And so I I'd wait for that. We were finally able to get it hooked up the weekend between Christmas and New Year's. And it took a full day to, to just test and get the water filled and the treatment in and make sure uh, make sure everything was running properly. It's raining, but I gotta do something. I'm putting in the final connection to our boiler so we can get that hooked up and fired up for the for heating the house. <sighs> Getting it filled with water and then I'll start I'll get it fired up for the first time this season and for the first time for us ever. Reach is full. It's ready to fire up. I was incredibly nervous because uh, I wanted it to work. Uh, and then we did have actually a major hang up that day too. Smiling, but you're not happy. Yeah, well, brand new house, I'm already tearing it apart. Um, I installed, the, the, there's a hole in the boiler lines. And so I need to find where that is. It's somewhere in this wall. <laughs> so I installed the boiler lines and then when the siding was put on, I'm pretty sure some nails poked right through the pipe. And so that's causing a leak. And we could see it dripping out the bottom where these pipes go to the outside. And uh, so, troubleshooting. 
right now. This one. So Cam finally found out where the nail hit there and it was from the siding nails. Just right up there at the top. Yeah, it's one of those two nails. Hole here, right by my finger, and a hole here. Just two tiny nail holes from the siding. Almost fixed. Some walls in a brand new house. I guess this is how the walls went up, so nothing new, huh? So that added about a two to three hour delay, uh, but we got that fixed and and uh, got it up and running. In a nutshell, how the boiler works is it is a giant fireplace. You can see it right behind me. It's a fireplace that is uh, surrounded by, with our model, 100 gallons of water. And the fire heats the water to a temperature that I have set, and it's typically between 170 and 180 degrees. That water is then pumped into the house through, via PEX pipes, the same pipes that are used now for showers and tubs and things like that except these are rated for consistently hot temperatures. Uh, and so it's pumped into the house and we have it, you can hook it up a variety of different ways. Ours is hooked up to heat our uh, air in the place of our furnace and then also to heat our domestic hot water. Some people use it and hook it up to radiant flooring if they have that or if they're doing a new build. The nice part about these is we put ours in while our house was being built, but they designed these so they can easily be retrofitted into an existing home. And so even if you have an older home, these, these will work plenty fine. And they're amazing. This thing's awesome. Yep, need some wood. So I, I load it about twice a day, which is fine. Just like that. I love that it takes big logs because they're much easier to cut and stack. And then one more door. Ready? Mm -hmm. That's full. I don't have a place to dump it right now. I'll take it in my garden. It's still on fire. Yeah. So I need it to cool. So I've been dumping it over there under the deck. I can scoop it into a wheelbarrow for you from there. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. So a couple main reasons why we decided to use a boiler as our primary source of heat. First, it is a cost-saving device. It allows us to use wood from our own land, which is free, and the price of that is not going up. Uh, whereas propane or electric, that seems to be going up and is not coming down. It keeps the mess outside and when compared to like heating your home with a indoor wood fireplace. So all the wood is kept out by the boiler outside you're not messing with lighting a fire in, in your you know around your fireplace and all that stuff so that's another reason where you light it at the beginning of the season and it stays lit until the end of the season in spring and so you light it once and it just it keeps going as long as you stoke it with wood it also the heating capacity you can heat your house and a shop or even I've seen people uh, attach a line to their greenhouse and there's lots of different or an RV or, or multiple houses uh, you know if you get your sizing right um, another reason it keeps again compared to a fireplace inside it keeps the fire outside so your your risk of fire you know happening in your house drops down to zero started cutting wood but while the kids are waiting they're, yeah, push it all the way through. they're trying to sled down the hill. Got Grandpa on the axe. Glad to have his help. You thought you fall down or something? 
What happened? I was going on the sled. I'm going on the sled? Okay. Thanks for loading the wood. Thank you. 